It's time for Speed 77 Radio's Motor Sports Madness. Powered by the staff at Race Chaser Online. Today's racing news. Yesterday's racing history. And now, here are your hosts, Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, and Kyle Magda. Welcome, everybody, to Monday Night Motorsports Madness here on the Performance Motorsports Network. We are glad to have all of you along for the ride as we get set for another couple of hours of motorsports conversation and a very busy show as well. Uh, a lot of stuff going on this evening. My name is Tom Baker, and joining me at the round table for this evening's show will be actually a rotating cast of our race chaser online speed 77 radio journalists of course race chaser online.com is our official motorsports news site and uh we are excited about what's going on tonight we got a lot of open wheel conversation we're going to be getting into but uh, that's not all we're going to focus on we'll bring jacob sealman on in just a moment kyle magda let's turn to you first Kyle, you had a chance to go see a race this weekend and cover a race for us that has been on my bucket list since I was old enough to know about it, and I've just never been able to make it there. It's I'm pledging that one of these years I'm going to do it. Glad that you had a chance to do it. How was the Turkey Derby? It was great, Tom, and good evening, everybody. Uh, Wall Stadium Speedway, their annual Turkey Derby, 41st running there, Tom. 38 tour modifieds in the race, and there only 26 made the race. And boy, once the green flag dropped, it was game on. And it was a nice mix. You had the wheel and modified tour guys, and you had some of the Wall Stadium regulars as well. And I think between both the SK and the tour modified classes, there were 70 cars between both. So just just an outstanding show. And a little chilly, but still the the, the stands were packed, and it was hard to find a seat if you were there, but uh, you know I was in I was in a nice warm uh, trailer most of the day, so uh, you know that that's the privilege you get with media. But nevertheless, just just a great race, and uh, I I have a full recap on on the site as well. So if you want to look at that, just but but like I said, what what a great day of racing. Yeah, we'll talk more about uh, getting into more detail about that uh, as we go through the show, but uh, definitely a. Uh, uh, certainly a special race up there, and I, I think even if it was zero degrees, you'd still find the packed grandstand as long as it was, um, as long as it was clear. Uh, let's uh, let let's just try. Um, okay, uh, sounds like uh, Jacob may be having some mic problems here. So, um, Kyle, you and I will uh, continue some conversation here while uh, our producer works with Jacob to get his mic situation straightened out. Uh, Kyle, lots of stuff, as I mentioned, going on tonight. We're going to bring in our cast of characters almost in full force here. Steve Ovens about the only one missing, um, along with uh, Kyle Souza, but we've got... Um, we're going to be talking with Ryan Kent, who actually the folks at PMN uh, haven't heard from yet. But uh, Ryan is one of our Midwest correspondents and specializes in the IndyCar and Indy Lights type series. And tonight we're going to heavily focus on that. We've got uh, uh, Dalton Kellett coming up at 730. Dalton is a... Uh, Pro Mazda Series racer is going to be running in that series in 2015 for Andretti Autosport. And then uh, coming up shortly thereafter, we'll be hearing from Zach Veach, who's been in Indy Lights with Andretti uh, and is actually looking to step up to the big cars this year and run in the IndyCar Series. Uh, but first, Kyle, we're, uh, we're going to be talking dirt track shortly. We've had a lot of stuff going on uh, up north with uh, dirt tracks being... Uh, bought and sold and um one of the tracks that was sold was the utica rome speedway we're going to be talking with bill shea very shortly who is the new owner of uh, the utica rome speedway looking forward to hearing uh what he has in store for one of new york state's most hallowed dirt tracks actually started out as a pavement track we'll talk to him about all of that but uh, uh it should be a fun show man yeah for sure you know like you said, we had that Indy car open wheel focus tonight, and, and I just want to say it's great to have Ryan Kent on the show tonight. You know, it's been a while. I think, like you said, like you said, Tom, it's his first show on here, and I hope, I hope we could just, I hope, I hope we could just impress him tonight. 
you know, we've had some great shows the last couple of weeks, and I just want to keep it going. And, and like you said, Tom, you know, with the dirt tracks and stuff, uh, it's good to see somebody keep that place alive. And I, I just want to give a quick thing about Williams Grove Speedway in Pennsylvania. Actually, their schedule comes out tonight, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. Well, that should be fun. And, you know, something else we're looking forward to, or at least we think we are, Kyle, uh, from the NASCAR side of things, there was supposed to be a big press conference or some sort of big announcement coming out from Jeff Gordon's camp tomorrow. But I've uh, been talking with Jacob through the day, and um, he's been trying to chase that. And it seems like there's a little bit of of dissension as to whether that's actually going to happen. Have you been able to uh, dig up anything, Kyle? I know you've been keeping an eye on things too. While I've been traveling back from uh, the national indoor cart championships where I was announcing all weekend. There was some rumblings about the announcement actually last week. And I, I saw someone post on Twitter and I asked them, I said, where did you hear that? And from all I, what I've heard is it's, it's been through some things on Facebook. That's all I really know and just from some sources saying that. So I'm not sure what to expect. I know a, a writing friend of mine actually said he emailed the Hendrick PR uh, rep there, and he said he didn't know anything about the, the press conference or if it will happen, but I, I think tomorrow we'll tell for sure. Yeah, it, uh, it, it sounds like maybe someone jumped the gun a little bit and maybe um, uh, started spreading the word before everything was finalized. I think the uh, the presumption w from a lot of people was that when they found out about this press conference was that uh, Jeff was going to announce his retirement. I'm sorry. I, I just I don't see him being ready for the 2015 season to be his uh, swan song, Kyle. I just really don't see Jeff Gordon being ready to call it quits by the end of next year. Too much fight left in the dog for, for my, uh, from my point of view. And Tom, just think of the season he had this year for exactly. wins and almost <laughs> winning the championship this season, maybe, maybe for not being Texas. I mean, he could be at the champions table uh, this week at Las Vegas. So really, I think he's coming to a point in his career, you know, he's, 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 I think he's 43 right now. And some drivers you've seen like Bobby Allison, didn't win their first championship there until they were in their 40s. So this late success could still happen for Jeff Gordon because what I saw to Jeff this year was a lot like what he had in the, in, the, in the mid to late 90s is he had all this success and so many wins. And, you know, tracks he hasn't won out in a long time, Kansas, Michigan, Dover, just so many places, Indianapolis, uh, not, you know, not to, not to forget. So just he had a great season in those Hendrick cars really stepped up their game this season, and especially for Jeff Gordon uh, doing what he could. So, Well, his, so team, uh, his team, Kyle, was extremely strong this year. And, you know, I think Jeff really has – I don't think Jeff's ever uh, lost anything in his, in, in his performance. It's always been more that the car hasn't been there, the – you know, the reliability hasn't been there or whatever have you, but I don't know that we can say that Jeff has ever had, you know, a, a season where we felt like maybe he was starting to decline in his driving. It's just always been about the team kind of ebbing and flowing a little bit in terms of their overall performance. And this year, uh, they, they had great luck for the most part. Um, and they had the car up front and, and up front fast almost every week. And I think that's why you saw him come back to the top. And, and it could have just as easily been him in the final four and winning the final four were it not for obviously the, uh, you know, the incident with uh, Keselowski at Texas. And then uh, of course the, in the final uh uh, it, it, you know, it, it really was a situation where he just wanted, I, I think he just wanted to get out of the way basically of the, of the four, uh, uh, finalists at, uh, Homestead when he was running up front. So, I mean, it, you know, the, it could have been a completely different situation had Texas not happened. So, uh, 
I don't see any reason, Kyle, why Jeff Gordon would would want to retire. And I heard some talk that, well, you know, it would make room for Chase Elliott. Well, yeah, it certainly would and put Chase in the 24 in 2016. But um, I don't think Jeff is going to just, you know, take a hike just because, you know, you've got to make room for Chase Elliott. I, I think I see Jeff Gordon racing for at least another year or two. Um and, and I, I, I believe that Jeff will be contending for the championship in both of those, you know, as long as he keeps going, he's going to be a contender when he starts to, to get to the point where he doesn't feel like he can physically, um, drive for 36 races, or if he gets to a point where his heart's just not in it, then he'll stop. I can't believe that he's at that point right now coming off one of his best seasons in years. Yeah. And another element you want to add is, is that also his back, uh, depending what happens with his back. And if he, if it feels better, right. I think that has a huge, huge impact, whether he continues to race or not. Cause I remember at Pocono, he said that if his back got worse, it would force him to retire, but well, he's still showing the speed. That's why I was saying physically, it would either have to be a physical decline of which that, that would be part of that. Or, you know, if he gets to the point where he feels like he just doesn't want to mentally be at that level for, for three quarters of a, of a year, then it's at that point he would make the decision. But as long as he's able to be competitive and race for wins and race for championships, and I just don't see it being to a point. So I was a little bit surprised when this big announcement was put out there. Um, that it was supposed to happen. I couldn't imagine what it would be that he was announcing. Um, if it were a big sponsor, I would, would think that would come from Hendrick, not necessarily from Jeff Gordon. Um, you know, so other than some sort of a, you know, uh, guess what? We're pregnant again kind of thing. Uh, you know, I, I can't see, uh, I can't see any reason for a big announcement coming out of Jeff's camp. I don't see him starting his own team. He already has that, um, you know, and, and he's got a lifetime contract to race for Hendrick. So unless there's some other project, maybe it's something from his foundation, you know, involving that or, you know, some other sort of thing like that, I can't see the reason for it. So I, I guess I wasn't totally surprised Kyle when it, it, uh, it started to circulate today that there was some real uh, disagreement as to whether this thing was even going to happen or not, um, because it sounded a little bit peculiar, peculiar to me from the beginning. Yeah, like you said, Tom, when it was first announced, the artwork did pop in my head. I won't lie about that. So, but I, I think for Jeff Gordon, you know, that season he had this year. That 24 had speed every single week. Didn't matter if it was a road course, a short track, super speedway, whatever, whatever the schedule held. So, I think going forward, and also with Chase Elliott, you know, with with Casey Kane re-signing with the team, I mean, that kind of, I think it kind of made some people scratch their head why Hendrick would do that because you know, with of course with Chase Elliott coming in, and then you know there was some there was some talks about maybe Dale Jr. going over and start a team, but he can't. Because with the four car team that he's in right now, if he continues to run with them, he can't run his own team. Well, Jacob Seelman, I think we've got you uh, locked and loaded and ready to go. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes before we take our first break of the evening. You want to weigh in on this a little bit? Yeah, can I have the reins back? I'm alive here. I really am. I'm excited, guys. Uh, and that was that might be the most bizarre first ten minutes of a show I've ever had on this end great of it. First but, ten minutes. Uh, it was a great first 10 minutes, but it's bizarre for me. I mean, I'm sitting here going, no, I can't yeah, say anything, but I, yeah, you're I can You're usually now. the main host of the show, so uh, <laughs> I know, have, I know, have I know. at it. Okay, I will have at it, and here's the deal. Until I see something from Hendrick Motorsports saying that there is a press conference, number one, I don't believe there's going to be a press conference because there's not been any word. I mean, we've talked about this. Everybody's been quiet, scary quiet. Quiet's usually a good thing, but I don't think so in this case. Number two, 
I don't see Jeff Gordon retiring because the big catch to all this is not only are the sponsors committed to the 24 team, but most of those sponsors are committed to Jeff Gordon, who said at the beginning of the season he wants to drive two or three more years. And I didn't hear any complaints about back spasms come around Texas when he and Brad Keselowski got into it. So uh, unless there's been some sort of flare-up that has just been completely kept out of the radar, I don't see Jeff Gordon leaving. I see Chase Elliott maybe filling a spot at one of the Hendrick affiliated teams. I'd love to see him over at Chip Ganassi's squad. Put Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, and Jamie McMurray in a three-car team. Ooh, boy. I like the prospect of that. I mean, we could see him at Stuart Haas, uh, like uh, you and I have talked about a bunch, Tom. I think uh, the 10 car. Perhaps I know there's Danica people out there going. Yeah, yeah let's not start no, that rumor yet. Let's not start that rumor yet. But uh, I mean, hey, we're that on occasion. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see where that shakes out. And tomorrow is supposedly the big day, so we'll see how it shakes out. Right now, what we're going to see is the other side of this caution flag. When we come back, we got more ahead. Tom, you're right. We're getting down and dirty. Bill Shea joins us next on the madness. And yes, I've taken the reins back. Stay with us. You're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. WinYourNewCar.com, enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free. Come on, stop dreaming, start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right, it's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. Hi, this is Yen Scott from Summit Point Kart in Summit Point, West Virginia. If you're looking for a real racing experience on a real racetrack, come out to Summit Point Kart this weekend. For as little as $25, you can get your racing career started. New this year, Summit Point Kart offers the RX250 capable of over 75 miles an hour. We're open every Friday from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m., Saturday from noon till 10 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 9 p.m. For more information, go to our website, summitpointkartwithak.com, or you can call us at 304-725-5270. Summit Point Kart, your East Coast karting center. In the race of everyday life, it's nice to have the green flag, but drivetrain problems are the pits. A fully remanufactured engine, transmission, or differential from Jasper engines and transmissions cost less than a new vehicle and comes with a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide transferable warranty. See jasperengines.com for details and get the green flag in your race of everyday life. See the boys at Chandler & Sons Automotive, 45977 Old Ox Road in Sterling. Give them a call, 703-437-7300. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But no matter how different we are, we're all connected and we can all make a difference. That's why United Way brings people, expertise, and resources together to improve the education income and health of our communities the building blocks for a better life when we live united our efforts magnified by others add up to real change children succeed in school families gain financial stability the health of our neighbors improves and suddenly so do our communities but real change won't happen without you live Live united United. so let's look beyond our differences Live Live United. united one by one let's make a difference Let's reach out a hand to one and influence the condition of all. (laughs) Live United. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Sign up today at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. We now return you to Two and a Half Men on Speed 77 Radio's Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now, okay, here's the question. (laughs) Which one of us is the half? (laughs) 
Just, just don't answer that. Move forward, Jacob. That's how you do that. <laughs> or is it Fine. me? You know what? <laughs> Fair enough. All right, guys. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. <laughs> uh, Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, Kyle Magda around the round table. And Tom, guess what? I hate that we don't have Steve Ovens because I'm saying down and dirty and he's not here. There's just something inherently not quite kosher. He's in with San that. Francisco, too. I don't think there's a dirt track anywhere in that whole state. Or that whole city, I'm not sure. I was going to say, there's dirt tracks in California. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I don't think there's any anywhere near San Fran, though. No, that that's true. So He's uh, grabbing rice a while we're uh, talking dirt here on the Madness. Yeah, let's, let's talk dirt, Tom. And while there's no dirt in San Francisco, there's plenty of dirt up in New York, and that's where we're headed. We are. We're headed to New York, and uh, we're going to talk with... Uh, a gentleman who is now a racetrack owner. We're going to bring on Bill Shea, uh, the new owner of the Utica Rome Speedway. And uh, Bill, first of all, welcome to the program. And I have to tell you, you have the most generous wife on the entire planet. It was awfully, awfully nice of her to buy you a racetrack for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was really nice of her to buy a racetrack for Christmas. I, I, it, it covers Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas next year, and the next year, too. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of those lifetime warranty sort of things, yeah, literally, right? you got it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, how all this came about. Obviously, Utica Rome, uh, we'll talk about the history in a moment, but Utica Rome is a track that uh, over the last good number of years has been one of the most uh, well-attended and, and much talked about dirt tracks in the uh, central part of New York State and has played such an important part of dirt track racing up there. Um, I know that you're from the area. Is this something you've always wanted to do, or is this something that just kind of came up, an opportunity, and you saw it and said, you know what, I want to do it, let's go? Well, I guess it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, you know, it, it's it's one of those dreams. You stand around the racetrack, and and uh, it's not just Utica Rome, but it's any track you go to. You know, if, if I was making decisions here, and if I owned this place, I'd do this. And uh, we had... Uh, you know, some of those moments of, of, uh, discussion, my wife and I about different things. And Utica Rome has always been our Sunday night track. I've gone there since I was five or I'm 59 years old now. And the first time I went there, I was five or six years old with my dad. And, uh, it's been a Sunday night destination pretty much my whole lifetime. And, uh, you know, went there mostly just as a fan sat in the stands and watched, you know, a lot of great drivers go through there. Um, saw the transition from asphalt to dirt. Um, you know, and I've never been in the past, was not a huge dirt fan. My heart was kind of always on asphalt. And as you know, Tom, my son Justin drove up at Oswego Speedway. And, yep. you know, I, I really enjoyed going there and, and participating and, um, but Utica Rome was still real close to home, and it was Sunday nights, and I'd go there and watch. Never had a race car there, never had anything until uh, my son moved to Wisconsin and um, for a job, and I was out of racing. And I said, well, geez, what am I going to do now? Well, lo and behold, Willie Decker, who was driving for Tommy Cullen at the time, um, he and Tommy split up, and... Um, I work with him at work. I work for Briggs and Stratton. We both work there. And Willie saw me in the hallway and he says, Hey, Bill, um, you ready to go racing again? And, you know, I didn't even think twice about it. I said, Sure, we're ready. And so we bought a modified, uh, dirt modified, and another dirt modified, and another dirt modified. <laughs> we started racing all over the place. And, um, you know, Sunday night was, Utica Rome was our home track because it's literally, a mile from our garage. And, uh, you know, we just knew everybody that worked there. We, it, it, it was, just, it's fun going there. It's like going home on Sunday nights. And, uh, Gene Cole, who owns the track, I, I got to know him very well. Um, and earlier this year, he says, Hey, Bill, um, you know, I'm trying to sell this place. You know, anybody wants to buy a racetrack and, you know, the light went off, bingo. Um, it'd really be nice if I could, if I could own this place. And my wife and I talked about it and, uh, Gene came back the next week and 
um, told him I might know somebody. It might be me, but I don't have any cash. And <laughs> we kind of joked around back and forth. And the next thing you know, we structured a deal um, and put it together, my, my wife and I and, and Jean and Gloria Cole. And uh, a week ago Friday, we became the new, or a week ago Saturday, it was, uh, we became the new owners of, of Utica Rome. So we're super excited about it. My wife's into it as much as I am. Um, we have a lot of ideas. Um, we want to grow what Jean and Gloria have already started. They've done an excellent job. Um, Barb Clark and John Tess and all the folks that work there of running the place. And we just want to continue to grow it and, uh, you know, make it the show place that it, that it currently is, continue to grow it to be a, even a better show place. Well, Bill, I think you've got some brownie points right there. I mean, when your wife's behind you and you own a racetrack, that's a pretty good sign right there. And you talked about at the start of this uh, how you said, okay, if I owned the racetrack, I would want to do this. Well, now you own the racetrack. So what's this in your mind? Where do you want to take Utica Rome for 2015? I, I, I know you were alluding to it. I'm sure there's some grand plans on the docket. Well, there's not a lot of grand plans for changes. Um, you know, here we are pretty late into the season. The schedule is pretty well set for next year. I am happy to announce that we have a World of Outlaws show there in October next year. Um, World of Outlaws Sprint Car Show wow. will be the first time they've been at Utica Rome, so that would be outstanding. Um, but I can't take credit for that. Jane worked, um, you know, through the World of Outlaw group to get that show scheduled. Um, and he's worked pretty diligently right up until the time of the sale, still continues to work and help us. Um, but the schedule is pretty well set. We don't see a lot of changes for next year other than um, in this area, the 60, they call it the 602 Sportsman class, which is a, a GM crate engine, Sportsman. Um, they've never run at Utica Rome. The class is growing leaps and bounds throughout the state because of a uh, relatively inexpensive engine. And we're going to run that as a weekly class at Utica Rome along with the open sportsmen and the modified. So um, that, that's, that's a difference um, and a change that we'll be making. And maybe a couple other changes that we've discussed, but we haven't made decisions on yet. I want to talk to uh, a few more race teams. I am a racer, and when, when we make changes, um, you know, I used to hate it when a track would tell us, you know, these heads – that you're currently using on your engine and no longer legal, we're going to use this cheaper head and you're going to save money. Well, yeah, $6,000 later, we saved money, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I, I don't want to change rules midstream. I want to talk to, uh, you know, the team owners and the drivers and and kind of go with the program that's already established here and, uh, you know, do tech on the rules that we do have and just keep everything on a fair playing field. Well, that, uh, that's a great plan, especially for a first-year owner. Not anything major, just uh, change some little things, tweak here and there, and just get a year under your belt. It, it's, it, there's not much broke there at Utica Rome, so not much there really to fix. Uh, there is a whole lot of history, though. Now, we've got about two minutes. Um, talk a little bit about what your plans are in terms of highlighting that because originally it was a paved track and you had drivers like Richie Evans and some of the best in uh, Northeast modifieds that were racing there on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, you know, weekly Richie Evans, Jeff Bodine, uh, Maynard Troyer, you name it, Dick Clark. There were, there were a lot of uh, pretty famous racers that raced there throughout the years. And uh, Richie's in the hall of fame, the NASCAR hall of fame. And we're super proud of that. We have a race every year, um, it's in August, and it's called the Legends Race, where we honor, um, you know, the former drivers that, that are either retired or gone on. Um, but Rainy Charland and um, Bill Wimble and just a whole bunch of them that each year we, you know, pick a few and, and honor those guys, have them at the races or their families and uh, run a 100 lap and pay 10000 to win, and it's always a lot of fun. Um, we're going to continue to do that. Um, you know, we're going to do whatever we can to, uh, to preserve the history that's there. And uh, we're, we're seeking some memorabilia. There's, uh, there's a bar there that Gene had, had purchased last year. And uh, we want to put a lot of old memorabilia in the bar 
Um, and we're going to have that open on just Sunday nights um, for, um, you know, for payout and after the races and uh, let people come in and check the stuff out. Well, it sounds great. And I know you're excited to have uh, the facility now and finally kind of got the purchase over with. And now you can, you and Kim and, and the staff there can start to go forward. We're looking forward to working with you here um, with PMN on some things, some projects next year with regard to that. We're excited about that. Our, our Turn 5 crew up in New York, uh, Turn 5 Live show be uh, par- a big part of that. And um and uh, want to talk to you tomorrow about uh, that show tomorrow night too. So uh, definitely appreciate you taking some time to be involved uh, with our show tonight, and uh, wish you and Kim all the best as you jump into track ownership here. I know your background; we've been friends a long time. I know you're just going to be an awesome promoter. You and Kim will do a great job there. So thanks again for being on, Bill. And with that, we are going to take a break. If you would uh, like to know more about Utica Rome Speedway, just uh, look up their website, Utica roomspeedway.com or look them up on facebook as well we are going to take uh, a break when we come back we're going to go open wheel racing here on motorsports madness and we've got about uh, an hour or so of that to get through uh lots of stuff including two very special guests we'll be back with more motorsports madness you're listening to the performance motorsports network how would you like to win a brand new corvette Larry O's got all the details. Enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at winyournewcar.com. That's right, winyournewcar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on, stop dreaming and start driving with winyournewcar.com. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. So you finally arrived at the sweet spot in your life. The kids are raised and gone. You have free time, and it's finally time to do something for you. If you've ever considered owning a Corvette but have been putting it off for years, now is the time to act. Isn't this the time to finally get that Corvette you always wanted and drooled and dreamed over? Well, grab the little lady by the hand and take her to Cooper Corvettes. They're conveniently located on Route 1 just off of I-95 and just north of the Marine Corps base. They have lots of pampered and well-maintained Corvettes in inventory. And if they don't have what you want, they'll find it. From classic stingrays to modern-day cars, Cooper is your one-stop shop. And speaking of shops, they service what they sell. And even if you didn't buy a Cooper Corvette, they'll service your Corvette anyway. Become part of the Cooper Corvette family. Call them at 703 445 14 that's 703-445-1483. And on the web at coopercorvettes.com. That's coopercorvettes.com, American pride and countrywide. You wouldn't trust your taxes to an uncertified accountant. So why trust your vehicle to an uncertified technician? When you have to take your car into the shop, look for the blue and white ASC sign. That ASC blue seal means the shop employees technician certified by the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. ASC certification is proof that technicians have the knowledge and experience to fix your vehicle right the first time. For more information on finding an ASC blue seal of excellence facility, visit the website at www.asc.com. Hi, this is Carl Edwards here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You want to make a difference? It's simple. Be responsible. Plan ahead. Designate before you celebrate. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. 
Now back to Jacob, Tom, and Kyle on Motorsports Madness. So welcome back to the Madness here on Speed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, Kyle Magda around this round table. And uh, I get to bring in one of our voices who's been on the Madness before, but uh, making his PMN debut with us tonight, Ryan Kent, our uh, second open wheel expert though uh, i think ryan lays off a little bit on the wine and cheese uh, <laughs> uh ryan first off uh, I, I you may not be joel but you get to have more fun than he does tonight so uh welcome back to the madness and uh, glad to have you on because we got a lot to talk about here in the next hour including a couple of uh, monster road to indy drivers who uh, you've been keeping an eye on lately absolutely guys it's great to be back after a couple of hospital room visits and uh and a right foot in the boot, um, doing much better, and uh, glad to be back talking talking motorsports with you, with you gentlemen. Yeah, we, we didn't call you Grace for a reason, Ryan. But uh, with all that being said, uh, we do have one of those special guests on with us now, and we'll go ahead and bring him out of the pits to run full throttle with us. Uh, Dalton Kellett, who was recently signed to Andretti Autosports Pro Mazda program for 2015. Uh, Dalton, first off, glad to have you on the show with us for the first time. And uh, this has to be a dream come true for you. Uh, just finishing up college and now all of a sudden after a, a first season in the Pro Mazda ranks uh, that exceeded some expectations, I know you get the call from one of the top teams in the class to go and run for Andretti Autosport in 2015. What's this whirlwind been like the last couple of weeks? Well, first, guys, thank you very much for, for having me on. It's quite the honor. But, yeah, just with the whole and and, and during the LB's these last couple of weeks, it's just been absolutely crazy. We have been doing lots of stuff like this, lots of radio, lots of press, and, you know, you know everyone's asking questions, asking asking what it's like. And it's just for for, uh, for a driver to be able to race for, for a team with as good of a reputation as the Android Autosport crew has, it's just an amazing opportunity. All right, now, Dell and I'm Ryan Kent. Welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us this evening. Now, you you went to Queen's University for engineering. Obviously, engineering a very big part of being in the race car industry. What kind of things can you feel yourself being able to help out with the crew and translate it from issues with the car on the track to taking it onto the computer and behind the behind the machine? Well, I think the the biggest thing. I mean, I'm I'm still actually at at school i'm just finishing up my uh, fourth year um the biggest thing for me is that i'm involved with the school's formula sae program so that's if you haven't heard of that basically how that works is it's teams of engineering students that get together and design their own race car from from the ground up and then we compete against other schools so being involved in in, in that whole process has really opened up the world of just vehicle vehicle dynamics testing and tuning so that i'm a lot more used to uh, uh, data software that, that, that we use at the actual track. So I think that's been a really big help. Dalton, I want to backtrack for just a second now because uh, this is going to be your uh, sophomore season in uh, the Pro Master class for 2015. And your first season, I know, uh, what well, wasn't everything I'm sure you hoped for, but it was uh, by no means uh, too bad of a season in itself. Uh, talk a little bit about what uh, you may have learned from this year's campaign that you can take uh, going forward to 2015 in this new ride with Andretti. Well, like you said, I mean that there was a lot of positive aspects to last year. We were able to put the K line car on on a on a podium and be in the top five and consistently in the in the top ten. So, I mean, there was definitely something positive to, to take out of it in terms of what I'm doing for next year. Definitely, the, for the first season, it was a learning experience. You know, I got I got I got I got used to the uh, Pro Mazda car. Obviously, different uh, different Cooper tires on the on on this car compared to the USF 2000 car that I was driving that I was in previously. So getting getting used to those tires and definitely the one of the bigger things getting used to the uh, rotary engine. So I mean, now that I have that experience behind me, I think I'll be able to attack a little bit harder right off the bat in the 2015 season. All right, now Dalton back on November 18th. Andretti Autosport, they announced that you're going to be driving the number 28 K-Line machine. What's it feel like driving for a guy like Mario Andretti in the 2014 Indy 500 winning team? Uh, 
like I said, it's just it's 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 amazing. I mean, I was down 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 uh, down down at their shop doing a seat fitting, and just you know, you get to see uh, just their their whole crew. They're very very professional. Very, you can tell everyone's extremely knowledgeable. Very just just very good operation. So I mean, just very excited. Dalton, obviously, uh, you've got a lot to look forward to for uh, 2015. And adjusting to a new team, I know, is uh, never easy, especially for uh, for one of the younger guys uh, on the squad. Uh, what do you feel like uh, are going to be any challenges uh, with the j- adjustment to Andretti? Or uh, what have you already found uh, that may make the transition a little bit easier going into uh, the start of the new year? Um. Well, at, at this point in my racing career, I mean, I've worked with a few teams and definitely a lot of engineers. So, I think I've 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 gotten better definitely at the pro at the process of just adjusting to working with a new engineer. Obviously, that that still takes time. You know, it'll be a couple test days just to make sure that, or just to get into the rhythm of how you know he wants me to communi- communicate with him and what and what I want to hear from him. Um, but I mean, after like we we did a off-season test prior to me signing with the team and again i felt like we had some pretty good pretty good chemistry so i think we should be good right off the bat. dalton is there a track that you're looking forward to on the uh, 2015 schedule oh definitely uh there's there's a few i mean I'd, I'd like i'd like to say all of them but if if i had to, if i had to choose uh, i would be between mid ohio and then obviously my my home race on the streets of toronto from the toronto indy um yeah but in 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 terms of a of a permanent racetrack definitely mid ohio i think that's one of the best tracks in america that is a racer's answer right there he's looking forward to everything uh, I, I can definitely understand uh, that answer dalton but uh, mid ohio is such a fun course for uh, all the divisions of the mazda road to indy it just seems like it continues to put on uh, put on great racing every single year and uh, obviously uh, this class doesn't do a lot of over racing but we'll do some uh, during the month of may uh, at lucas oil raceway obviously uh, that uh, one of the more different uh, aspects of the schedule and uh, something that uh, a lot of the class isn't necessarily as used to I would say but uh, you got the opportunity to experience that this year Uh, how different is that from uh, all the uh, road and street courses that you guys run on regularly in Pro Mazda Uh, it's a a big adjustment in every aspect I mean just from the setups alone, I mean, obviously the cars that you bring to the oval are nothing like what you'd be racing on, on the road course. Um, driving wise, it's, it's a different approach. I mean, you got to be really smooth, really consistent. You can't make any mistakes. Um, I think this year, with the fact that we're well, we 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 went to two, two ovals last year, uh, the Lucas Oil, and we also went to the Milwaukee Mile. Uh, this year, we'll we'll be going to Iowa. So again, that'll be another learning experience. Pretty excited for that track, though. It looks pretty fast and pretty fun. It is a fast, short oval, and uh, you know, you talked about it at the uh, the top of the segment here. But obviously, uh, Canada, a long history, and uh, not just the IndyCar series, but the whole Mazda Road to Indy. A lot of uh, support from your countrymen, and you've uh, watched guys like uh, James Hinchcliffe, Paul Tracy over the years, who have uh, marched their way to the IndyCar series and had a lot of success. What's it mean to you to be able to carry the flag for your country and carry on? Uh, the uh, the legacy in American Open Wheel Racing uh, going into 2015. Yeah, like with with the pedigree of the of the drivers that you just mentioned. I mean, it's it's it. There's there's obviously a certain amount of responsibility, and 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 you feel like you have to keep up that same level of, of excellence. But I mean, that just basically drives you to to push and work harder. And before we let you go, Dalton, obviously a lot of people uh, went into this season for you, but a lot of people going into making this new deal happen as well. And we uh, always want to give you a chance to shout out to uh, the sponsors, supporters, people behind the scenes. Uh, so who makes it happen for Dalton Kelly? Oh, of, of course, I have to, have to give the shout out to Kalen and in, Insiders USA. We wouldn't be there without their without their, their, their support. And a big thank you to the Andretti Autosport crew, everyone there that has made this deal possible. Um, I also have to thank my my parents. I mean, they've been a huge part in my entire career. 
uh, I wouldn't be where I am without them and just pretty much everyone who's helped me develop to the, to the point where I am now as, as, a, as a driver, all of the engineers, all of the uh, 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 different driver coaches, I wouldn't be here uh, without them. So just thanks to all you guys. Well, Dalton, we're looking forward to seeing you on the grid uh, in Andretti Colors for 2015 and definitely appreciate you coming on and taking a few minutes to talk with us here on Motorsports Madness this evening. Uh, wish you all the best as uh, you guys continue to uh, prep for the new year throughout this off season. Uh, definitely wish uh, you and yours a uh, restful holiday season, and we will see you in a couple months' time when Pro Mazda kicks off for uh, 2015. Yeah, Kyle and I, thank you very much. Hopefully we'll have more to talk about as the season goes on. That's what we're hoping for. That's Dalton Kellett out of the Andretti Autosport Pro Mazda program now for 2015. And with that, we are going to take a caution flag, but still a lot more ahead. Uh, more open wheel conversation coming up as we continue Open Wheel Central on the Madness right after this. You are listening to the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. In the Pits Media is proud to present its newest partner, WinYourNewCar.com. That's right, you now can enter the number one American Dream Car Contest giveaway at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on, stop dreaming, start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hands can do incredible things. They made every sound in this piece of music. But nothing compares to using them to help save a life. If an adult suddenly collapses, call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of their chest until help arrives. It's called Hands Only CPR, and it's recommended by the American Heart Association. Visit handsonlycpr.org today. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40-year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money-saving coupons. Cotman, real service, real fast. You know that phone call is going to come at the worst possible time, right at the end of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth down, and one yard to go. They're piling up, but you can't watch that. you got to get that car off the road. This could have been prevented if you have taken advantage of Cotman's free TransCheck 21. Here's a chance to have us look at your car and head off any problems that could happen that could interrupt that game. Again, it's a free check. Come see us. See Leonard and fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703-365-7200. All I wanted to do was just pick up a guitar and sing praise songs. From IamSecond.com. Well, when I got to 17, I was playing in After Hours bars, just in a bunch of trouble. Grammy Award winner Michael W. Smith. Smoking that first joint and feeling so guilty about it. From there, it was LSD, and your compass sort of just like disappeared. I knew where I belonged. I just couldn't get out. I was very depressed. I went on the floor and just began to shake. And I was just weeping. I was weeping. And I just began to cry out for God. 12.30 at night, on the linoleum floor of my kitchen, the God of the universe came and wept with me on that floor. I know where my hope lies. It's not being a rock star. I'm a son of the high king of the universe. Watch Michael's story at IamSecond.com. Time now for Open Wheel Central with our resident wine and cheeser, Joe Sebastianelli. Here to pop the cork is Race Chaser Online's managing editor, Jacob Seelman. 
Should be interesting to see what happens as we go forward with this program here because we have got a lot to, still to come. Uh, still got uh, Zach Beach coming up in the next hour. And uh, we're going to be talking with Joel Sebastianelli, our resident wine and cheeser as well. So um, as we get started here, my name is Tom Baker and uh, we've got Jacob Seelman, Kyle Magda and Ryan Kent right now around the round table. And Ryan, having just heard from Dalton Kellett, uh, kind of starts you thinking about what's going on next year in the Mazda Road to Indy. And of course, you're pretty much um, uh, you're pretty much a a fixture when it comes to the Indy Light Series, and that's getting a, a bit of a shift. 415 with a brand new race car and some interesting changes to the schedules as well. Absolutely. Uh, very excited uh, from at least some of the guys that I've talked to. Spencer Piggin, I know we had him on a short time ago. He's very excited to get into that IL-15 car made by Delara, of course. Um, really, it's a big upgrade for those guys because that thing – that thing looks fantastic. Uh, I don't want to say it looks like an F1 car, but it looks like something out of Europe. Uh, I think it's a nice backup. Uh, not a backup, I should say, but a compliment say? to the uh, DW12. Uh, I think it's going to be very exciting to see some of the newer speeds that we get with something like this. Um, something with the old Indy Lights car that a lot of guys talked about. One, it, it was not the most attractive-looking car. Uh, two, it was a little bit more expensive, um, some owners have said, than what this new car is going to be. Um, I know talking to Sam Schmidt back at Mid-Ohio, they had a little bit of an issue getting this car, uh, getting this car reacclimated and getting a full set of teams to be able to compete in Indy Lights for 2015. Finally, Sam Schmidt got in. Of course, he's a longtime champion, a big resource for that Indy Lights program. And once he got in, we've seen a couple more teams buy in on their stock for those IL-15s for the 2015 Indy Lights season. And it's going to be really exciting to see where, where this goes. It's going to be exciting to see where this goes now, Ryan. And here comes uh, part two of the question that Tom started for me. Uh, we've got the new car, and we've got some changes to the schedule now for next year. And one of the biggest changes that I'm so jealous they didn't use with the Indy cars too, and it's one that uh, you got a little googly-eyed at, is the fact that after Labor Day weekend, we're going to Laguna Seca. And we're not just going to Laguna Seca with one Mazda Road to Indy. We're not just going to uh, Laguna Seca with two Mazda Road to Indy classes. No, it's a triple header. I love it. I'm excited. It's a great racetrack. And what a better way to wrap up all three schedules for 2015. And if somebody at 16th and Georgetown is paying attention, that'd be great, too. The IndyCar Series would put on a great show there. Absolutely. You know, I was at that 2014 Mid-Ohio race when you have all three cars on uh, the Pirelli World Challenge was there as well, which made a, which made for an absolutely fantastic weekend of racing. But there were three USF races, two Pro Mazda races and two Indy Lights races. And remember, that was right in the battle of that Indy Lights championship between Harvey Chavez and Veach. Of course, you saw Gabby Chavez come out with that Indy Lights title. But that was a big weekend, of course. Jack Harvey took home both titles, both trophies that weekend, I should say. But I think ending the season on that kind of a note was going to be very exciting. And having two races in a three-day span is going to really make for some tough racing. And it's going to test a lot of those race teams to see who truly is the best. And it's going to make for a really great, interesting uh, finish to the 2015 Indy Light schedule. And, oh, by the way, uh, we don't just have... Laguna Seca. Uh, I believe Dalton mentioned it actually when he was talking about uh, some tracks that we were excited about. Uh, Iowa making a return to the Mazda Road to Indy uh, for 2015, and that's a fun little racetrack for some of those guys. And you know, we talk about it. These Ma these uh, Mazda Road to Indy drivers don't get to run on a lot of oval tracks, Ryan. So the ones they do get to compete on are very valuable. And this Iowa track, we know how racy it is. We know it can produce three wide and even uh, room enough to go 
four wide racing. That's a fun track. I mean, Lucas Oil Raceway and, of course, for the Indy Lights boys, uh, the big track at IMS. I mean, not a lot of ovals there, but uh, the, the left turns they do have, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Absolutely. And taking a look here at some of the preseason testing, on January 26th and the 27th, they're going to head down to Homestead. They're going to test on that 2.21-mile 14-turn road course. They're going to head to Homestead on the big oval after that. They're going to head down to NOLA, the NOLA Motorsports Park. 2.75, 16-turn road course. They're going to be testing on that. Of course, that's a big, nice addition for the 2015 big guys, the Verizon IndyCar Series. And they're going to finish off the testing with Barber before they go to St. Petersburg to kick off the season on March 30th. Yeah, Tom, here, I'll, I'll, throw, one, I'll throw a bone your way. Why can't we put these guys back on the Oval at Homestead, please? Somebody, please, anybody? Oh, I think that would be just way too good of an idea. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I don't see any reason why we couldn't find a way to, to have something that combines it with some sort of a NASCAR thing. I mean, I just, I think that IndyCar and NASCAR, and I'm talking in general, should do more stuff together. And I don't see any reason why we couldn't have some of these tracks like a homestead uh kyle's mentioning chicago land in our chat that i mean any of these tracks um why we couldn't do some of this sort of thing i think it would be great it just draws more people and more fans and more of a variety to see all the different types of racing that exist and i would love to see shoot i would love to see a super race week and I, I had this conversation with somebody while I was out in Mississippi. I would love to have what a, a super race week somewhere in the U.S. that, that would, would happen during the summertime. You'd have to do it during the summer when people would typically take vacations and combine IndyCar, NASCAR, Mazda Road to Indy, Pirelli World Challenge. And, you know, depending on what track you pick, you could actually throw in a paved 410 sprint car or even silver crown show and do some short track stuff there's got to be some sort of i know it's a huge ticket it would be a huge bunch of purses and all of that to cover but i would love to see some sort of a super race week planned where there was four or five days of racing like that i just think that would be awesome to see you guys are around that charlotte area do you think we could see a combination at Charlotte between the Indy cars, the Pro Mazda <laughs> ranks there, <laughs> and see the Pirelli World Challenge come in and see them race on the road course as well? Well, now, see, that would be, and you've got the dirt facility here, too. Now, that, that would be the perfect place to have something like that. The only drawback is that I think the folks at CMS would be very reluctant to bring the IndyCar series back after, you know, the In last black. time it was there. But... um but I don't see any reason at this point with the newer cars. They're much safer. It's a, it's a totally different uh, series now. I don't see any reason why that couldn't be planned. And, yeah, that would be – this would be a great place to hold it and, and have some big dirt racing with it, too. You can put it actually – you could stick some of that in between um, the uh, All-Star uh, race – week and the uh the, the the 600 week something like that or even at the end of the season um i think it'd be great uh go ahead jacob yeah yeah i'll i'll, I'll take a go ahead here and tom I'll, I'll refute this only by saying that makes too much sense have we not learned anything from joel's rant about the boston consulting group this year that makes too much sense yeah, it really does. And yes, I realize, by the way, that that what I'm saying is putting an IndyCar race in between uh, somewhere near the Indy 500. I, I wasn't talking necessarily about the IndyCar series, but bringing in, you know, a Pro Mazda or, you know, a, a, a USF 2000 or, you know, shoot, even an Indy Lights race, um, you know, somewhere in that vicinity, um, and then bringing in the car at some point later. Yeah, maybe the October, October weekend. Sure, why not? I mean, I think it'd be great. You know, but again, you, you're, you're probably right. It probably makes too much sense. But I just think you would have people 
here uh, the, the, it would be I think it'd be an amazing show honestly I really do if you combine the two of them the promotional power of that and the drawing power and the and mm-hmm. the the idea of them uh, even a couple of the guys crossing over and and, and running you know multiple yes, series please. would be great yes please and I, I, I'll I'll throw into that that while we're making sense here I love this it's a great segue we're we're, we're gonna take a break but we're gonna go from making sense to making more sense because after this we are gonna talk with arguably one of my favorite guests to have on the madness because he doesn't just epitomize our madness he makes it make sense and after this Zach Veach joins us to talk a little bit of everything any lights from this season potentially Indy Car for next season and uh, uh, just about everything in between. You never know what you're going to get with him, and I guess we'll find out what we're going to get right after this, so stay tuned. Open Wheel Central and Motorsports Madness rolls on after this on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. WinYourNewCar.com, enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free. Come on. Stop dreaming. Start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. We're growing like crazy and need account reps who know their way around agencies, the Internet, and social media. Got connections? Or do you know how to get to the decision makers? Are you fearless? We need you. Internet radio, or as we call it, wireless mobile radio, is rapidly becoming the place to be with almost limitless income potential. So contact us to get involved with the fastest growing professionally produced group of internet radio stations in the world. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or you can email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico in Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. You wouldn't trust your taxes to an uncertified accountant. So why trust your vehicle to an uncertified technician? When you have to take your car into the shop, look for the blue and white ASE sign. That ASE blue seal means the shop employs technician certified by the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. ASE certification is proof that technicians have the knowledge and experience to fix your vehicle right the first time. For more information on finding an ASE blue seal of excellence facility, visit the website at www.ase.com. My very first movie, it was called The um, British Terabithia, and that was a film that a lot of kids loved. From IamSecond.com. It felt very cool in my heart to know that I did something nice. Actress Bailey Madison. I don't want it to be about me, I want it to be about um, God. Even though you had an earth father, he is your father, that you could say to him, God, I'm not feeling too well today. Or if it's just, you know, little things like, I, I feel homesick here. I need you, Lord. I need, I need to feel happiness in my heart. The most important thing is you have to have hope. You have to have faith. God is with you, and God is with you every step of the way. If you give yourself to God and you say, I'm ready to commit myself to you, you will know that God is watching you. He looks out and he goes, I'm very, very happy with what you just did. My name is Bailey Madison. I am second. Hi, the kids. It's time to get dirty on Speed 77 Radio's Motorsports Madness. Here are your hosts, Jacob, Tom, and Kyle, with Turn 5 Live's curator of Casa de Pork Shop, Stephen Oven. Well, kind of, sort of. Uh, not really. Steve, uh, uh, Steve, where, Steve is finding more food, rice a what, what was that, Tom, rice a you said, I What's think? It's a San Francisco tree. That's, it's that's the San Francisco Ronnie. tree. There we go. All that's right. What the anyway, used to welcome say. back. <laughs> welcome back to Motorsports Madness. In any event, Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, uh, Ryan Kent, Kyle Magda, around this roundtable, Open Wheel Central, continuing here on the Madness. And 
arguably, uh, this is where it gets a little bit crazy. Or uh, as I think he told me the last time I got a chance to talk to him, a whole lot crazy. Uh, because we uh, bring back to the madness Andretti Autosport Indy Lights driver for 2014. And I would have to imagine he's thinking IndyCar for 2015. Zach Beach, I I've been meaning to ask you for about two months now. Any plans yet for next year? Do we know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing other than the fact that you get to talk on a microphone with us for 15 minutes, which is a scary <laughs> thought? Well, hey, uh, well, first off, I think I saw Tom. You celebrated a birthday not too long ago, so I want to say happy birthday, man. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, actually, um, we're really, really close to having a uh, full-time IndyCar deal done for 2015. Uh, it's not not signed yet, but we're uh, kind of in the final stages of it. So hopefully we can get that put together. You guys will find us in the fourth car at Andretti Autosport and running the big series. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Much love to that statement. And, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't possible without some really, really solid runs this season, Zach. And I know it wasn't the title that you wanted, but it was still a, a very solid year for you. And it had a lot of high points. Definitely started off a lot higher than uh, 2013 did for you guys. Uh, you look back on this season. Uh, what do you see for yourself now that uh, you're finally getting ready to climb that last run? You know, I'm just uh, very thankful. I mean, um, kind of this this past season that we had really just kind of showed me how much you can work at something or how much what you put in is what you get in return. And, you know, 2013 wasn't exactly the year we wanted, so we kind of just tore everything down and rebuilt it from the ground up and really put together the year that, you know, I wanted to have in 2014. So we didn't get the title, but, you know, come out third in the championship only – 27 point behind first i think uh was a really good good season for us and we're just going to keep that momentum going forward into the next year all right now zach ryan here uh obviously you train up at pit fit training in indianapolis what kind of things have you been doing i noticed just a couple of days ago you said you'd gain 10 pounds in preparation to battle one of these you know, Indy yeah, cars yeah, for 2015. Well, what kind of right things are now, you doing to to get prepared for that DL? Thing. To to excuse me, to get prepared for that DW12. Yeah, no worries. Uh, right now, they're kind of just wanting me to sit on the couch and eat. But uh, no, right, it's um, really about just kind of gaining muscle and mass right now. So it's all just uh, a lot of heavy weights, low rep type things. Since we still have a lot of time before the season starts, we're just kind of focused on building things up before we really want to tone them down. So, you know, a lot of calories, a lot of, uh, you know, low rep, uh, high weight things. So we're not burning too many calories out while we're working. And as we get closer to the season, we'll start, you know, kind of changing our uh, strategy to get more cardio involved with that. But I have about 10 more pounds I have to gain. I'm at 120 right now. They're wanting me at 130 before I step in the big car. And that's kind of just a goal I set myself because, I want to have a little bit in reserve as we get into these longer races because going from 45 minutes to two and a half hour races is going to be a, a quite a change. Yeah, Zach, they've got you on Tom's diet sitting on the couch eating food because you don't weigh <laughs> any more than I do soaking wet. So <laughs> It's not a bad diet to have at all. I mean, I have to be honest about that. <laughs> I, find it quite, I find it quite stimulating, actually. <laughs> I mean, I could watch whatever I want. I've got into some Netflix uh, TV shows. I'm like on the ninth season of Bones, so I've went through that probably a month now. So, you know, I'm I'm trying to find ways to keep myself busy while I try to feed this habit. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. I mean, it's, it's a six-month off season, and I've seen some Instagram pictures. What have you been doing to stay busy? I saw, I saw a plane. I mean, it can't possibly be having fun with that. Oh, not at all. So, <laughs> uh, one, of my, one of my goals is always to, I'd like to be a pilot and uh, fly to the close races like Milwaukee and Ohio. So, uh, now that I moved to Indiana, there's a uh, Indianapolis Metropolitan Airport really close to me. So, I got a friend named Doug Matthews who races uh, P-51 from the Reno show. So, uh, he gave me a scholarship to go get my pilot's license. So, I've been working really hard on trying to get through that and 
I get get it done, uh, then we're talking about him teaching me how to solo a P51. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun, but it's a little later down the road. Zach, I just want to go back to this season for a minute. You had that great battle with Gabby Chavez all season long. Uh, what was it like racing with him and then, of course, coming down to the championship in the, in the final week? You know, it's for me, it was just it was so much fun. I mean, racing with somebody like Gabby, you know, we'd be at the racetrack, butting heads, they're running side-by-side, side, touching wheels, and we'd get back home to Indianapolis on Monday or Tuesday, and we'd go rock climbing or, you know, go to dinner or something. So, I just, you know, he was one of those guys I could spend a lot of time with, just close friends, and we really kept what we had at the track separate than what we had uh, here in Indiana. So, you know, it was, it was just a lot of fun because I knew I could race him really hard and he could race me the same way. And we, we both would come out at the end of the corner. All right, now, Zach, sticking on the topic of uh, your friend Gabby Chavez there, I watched the Driver Tears episode where you guys are getting interviewed, you're rolling around, you're going through pit fit training. I believe you're rolling around in Indianapolis area, Walmart. Care to explain that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, well, our first one, we, we decided that we were just going to throw a bunch of random stuff in there and see if people liked it or not. But, um, yeah, we just wanted to come up with something that was completely off the walls different and we had a lot of fun doing it, so I think we're going to keep it going. We're going to make the episode a little bit shorter and keep it a one thing thing through it, but uh, we already got a couple more episodes that we want to make and some ideas drawn up just to you know, get us through the off season when we're in between training, training and testing. So I think uh, we got a couple of good ideas that I think a lot of people are going to really like, so we, we got to wait for those to come out. So hopefully there will be more people watching. Well, I mean, we hope there's more people watching already, Zach. I mean, you're pretty entertaining as it is, but uh, you, you talk about getting through this off season, and we just finished up Thanksgiving. Uh, I know uh, you and uh, some of the other Andretti Auto Sport uh, crew were busy uh, working with turkeys just before the holiday and uh, uh, doing a lot of charity work, obviously, uh, as always with the anti-bullying crusade that you've been uh, such a big part of the last couple of years. Uh, so as far as you're away from the track work, the charity work, what have you been up to lately? Yeah, well, really, I mean, it, it was really nice to be a part of uh, Butterball and handing out those turkeys for Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, this is just one of those things that we're all in this together, and the holidays is really one of those times when I like to go out and help as much as I can because it's just, you know, one of those things that we all need to come together is, is one, but... Other than that, I mean, really, it's just been a lot of training, like we talked, flying, and uh, I'm actually getting back into racing RC cars since it's winter time. So, I've been having a lot of fun with that, and really just working uh, really hard trying to get this deal together. And I think um, it should, I should know something uh, either tomorrow or by the end of this week. So, if that comes together, we're trying really hard to um, be at the IndyCar test December 16th in Sebring. So uh, that's kind of just my main focus right now. So just pushing really hard to get that done and hopefully be sitting in the car and making a seat uh, at the end of this week or maybe next. Zach, uh, it's, uh, I think we're all excited that you're looking to step up into the IndyCar series. When did you start thinking that maybe this year was the time? Is this something that you thought about after the season or were you thinking about it during the season and this was kind of the plan all along, assuming that everything could fall into place? Um, well, I mean, for me, it kind of happened after St. Pete, but no, um, so with Michael, we talk a lot before, you know, I even got into Indy Life, and he kind of had a plan from the beginning that, you know, my first year of Indy Life, he says, it's going to be a year, year, year full of mistakes. You're going to be learning a lot, and if we can get you on the podium a few times, that would be great as well. And we kind of followed that plan, and he said, your second year, let's try to go for the championship. So we really ended up kind of having – that first year that I didn't want to, but the second year kind of fell into exactly what he was hoping for. And at the end of it, Michael kind of said, well, let's start thinking about bigger cars and, uh, you know, a bigger season next year. 
bigger cars and yet uh, still still a bit of a small fry there, Zach, but I know you're working on that. And, uh, you know, you wished Tom a, a happy belated birthday at the top of this segment. I guess uh, we'll, we'll kind of flip that around back at you because you've got a birthday coming up uh, a week from tomorrow, if I'm doing my math correct here. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Well, th- then there you go. We'll wish you a little bit of a happy early birthday, and uh, and well, I know you that uh, so since you still have what about three months of off season left to celebrate it, you'll be able to have a little bit of fun because you get a birthday, then Christmas, then New Year's. So uh, the party doesn't stop the whole month. Exactly, December is a great year. I'm, I'm lucky to have a birthday in that, but you know this is going to be my first uh, non teenage birthday. So being 20 years old. Oh, that's so- right. I'm really starting to uh, realize uh, you know, that group I started with, you know, Chavez and Karen, that we're not exactly the young kids on the block anymore. You see all these 15-year-olds coming in and taking our old places, and you're like, wow, we, we really were at the forefront of this, and it, it's pretty cool to see things change the way that it has in just five years. It's been a lot of fun, and actually, I think I could almost echo those sentiments, Zach, because uh, it, it's a similar boat. But of course, uh, before we let you go, uh, you know the drill, as always. Uh, the sponsors, supporters, uh, and goodness, you've got a ton of shout outs uh, because it takes a lot of people to make your gig go round. Uh, so, who makes it happen for uh, you and the team, Zach? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, it's very, very thankful for Andretti Autosport. I mean, I've been with them for four going on five seasons and I'd like to spend as much of my career there as possible and Replay XC for coming on and helping us make this season what it was along with ABS IC Solutions, Cozy Data Backup and manually the Young Marines as well, allowing me to be a spokesperson for them and just meeting all the great kids throughout the country that they represent with their program. So it was it was a really fun year for me and I'm glad that we could give them the results that we did. But I hope they're strapped on for the ride because the next couple of years are going to be even better. Well, Zach, it's been a ball having you back on the show again. And, uh, you know, just really enjoyed uh, keeping up with you over the last few years as you've made your ascension up the road to Indy Ladder. And uh, we could be more excited or proud of you that uh, hopefully, uh, Lord willing, you're finally going to get your chance at uh, the IndyCar Series. We'll be looking forward to uh, hopefully hearing that announcement soon. And uh, just again, uh, uh, you know, thanks for taking the time to come on with us and, and have some fun again. And uh, good luck to you and to the whole Andretti Autosport team as you go into your off-season testing and, and prepare for what we hope will be a huge 2015 for all you guys. Well, that means a lot. Thank you guys so much for having me back on. Enjoy your holidays. And hopefully I'll be seeing you uh, at Pocono again next year. All right, Ziggy, looking forward to that, actually. That's on, that's definitely on my schedule, so uh, look forward to seeing Perfect. that uh, as well. So, again, uh, happy early birthday to you, and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and the family and all of the uh, guys at Andretti Auto Sport. And with that, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to continue on the open wheel theme. Our resident wine and cheeser, Joel Sebastianelli, will join us. You are listening to Motorsports Badness on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. Enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at winyournewcar.com. That's right, winyournewcar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on, stop dreaming and start driving with winyournewcar.com. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right, it's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. On the air, you may know me as the man about motorsports. Actually, I've been the man about insurance for over 30 years. With one call, I can cover your life, health, auto, home, and business insurance. Recently, I saved a young couple over $500 on their annual car insurance bill. 
no gimmicks, and no green lizard. So if you think your insurer is really your good neighbor who is on your side because he is holding your money in his good hands, think again. Call me, 703-631-8000. I have dozens of insurance companies waiting to give you the protection you need and deserve. It may take more than 15 minutes, but you'll receive sound advice, quality professional service, and an honest opinion. That number again, 703-631-8000. As for Larry O. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win a Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com. We came close, but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he'd guide us to that ultimate victory. Watch Tony's story at IamSecond.com. Time to get back to tonight's Motorsports Madness. Here are the only three of a kind that beats a full house. Jacob Zielman, Tom Baker, and Kyle Magda. Is that four of a kind now? I mean, hey, open wheel just makes everything fun. I love it. So... Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker back at this uh, round table with uh, Ryan Kent still continuing uh, probably the longest open wheel central segment that I've ever had. And uh, Joel, 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 uh, we, we pulled out the wine and cheese about, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes late. Uh, he, here you go changing the schedule on us again and um, just, you know. I mean, we were off last week after we had F1 racing to talk about, and Lewis Hamilton won another world title, so all's right in the world. No such thing as too late for wine. We just have a little bit of catching up to do here. (laughs) Uh, You know, for for Lewis Hamilton in Abu Dhabi, obviously he's the man who deserves this title. Uh, I've been saying all along that I think all of us who are fans of F1 know that, hey, Lewis Hamilton is the guy who deserves to be the champion but will he be the champion? That's been the big question heading into this with double points in Abu Dhabi. And I'm satisfied, although a little disappointed for Nico Rosberg. I hate to see it end the way it did with an ERS failure and slumping home one lap down, completing just 54 laps in 14th. He certainly deserved an effort a little more uh, a little more successful than that. But it was a very valiant drive. Mercedes AMG Petronas actually wanted to park him. And he said, no, I want to finish this season out. And very proud of the way he did so. Just that car is so difficult to drive in the end. A shame it wasn't really a battle for the fans. But the good thing is double points will be gone next year. And this year, they really didn't have any play in anything. The man who dominated so much of this F1 season consistently ahead of his teammate Nico Rosberg four wins in a row after Australia a victory at Great Britain and then of course the incredible streak winning six of the last seven races after the Nico Rosberg took him out with contact on the second lap of the Belgian Grand Prix second world title for Lewis Hamilton and a great day for the Brits as well he had Prince Harry in his pits who gave him a congratulatory message afterwards and in GP2 and GP3 all British champions, and who knows, maybe another extra British storyline here. When Lewis Hamilton won his first world title at the Brazilian Grand Prix back in uh, 2008, it was actually the last race for David Coulthard, and perhaps this year may actually be the last race for Jensen Button as well. We still don't know his status with McLaren. He's mentioned that the WEC could certainly be a possibility. He'd love to join Mark Webber there. So a lot of unknowns, but the season ended really the way it should have with Lewis Hamilton on top. It, and it did. And if that wasn't enough, not only was Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes on top at the end of the actual points paying season, but hey, Joel, they were on top at the end of testing too. How about that? 
Yeah, not really much of a surprise there. Not really a lot that these teams are able to bring out from next season either. Uh, of course, this test helps, I suppose, in some regards, a chance to try new things. For example, Lotus uh, trying very different front noses. And, you know, they did a lot of things to their car. Uh, McLaren tried to trot out the Honda and with Stoffel van Dorn only completed one lap throughout the testing. So still plenty of work to be done there. Pascal Werlein for Mercedes, bringing them on top a half second ahead of anybody else. Really no surprises. And I don't think that there's that much that you can take out of it in a speculatory standpoint. There's not really that much speculation you can make. Uh, we saw the F1 pecking order from 2014 present itself. And until they go to Spain in 2015, there won't really be that much testing. So uh, actually, I think the only testing that's really that noteworthy, to be quite honest, from the last week has been Sebastian Vettel donning red and joining Ferrari. said that his debut with mm -hmm. the team has been a fairy tale fairy tale all across the weekend uh, he had a chance to run the 2012 edition of the car uh, bearing his number but of course it's an older car so it was really a symbolic thing in some ways for him to finally get inside the ferrari met with executives and the big wigs at ferrari today uh, wrapping up his weekend there at marinello and at their testing track so good for sebastian vettel but of course, that comes away from Abu Dhabi. Really just a good chance for young drivers to get the hunt behind the wheel in Abu Dhabi. Not really that much you can take forward for 2015, I don't think. Ah, I guess we'll see, won't we? And, uh, it, you know, if, if Mercedes topping the test wasn't enough, uh, hey, uh, the, the last point that I've got, because it's the only other one that sticks out to me, Joel, uh, Honda McLaren was not just bad. They weren't even just terrible. They were abysmal. I don't even... Th did they complete a lap at speed at all? I don't think they did. It was just one time that they were able to cross the line with Stoffel von Doren. Uh, you know, it's not a huge surprise. I think a lot of people saw it coming that they would have troubles. It's going to be a very difficult slope for Honda to climb up. Not impossible, and they will absolutely get there at some point. But to return to the sport, there's bound to be difficulties. There always is, and with the testing restrictions, you really don't know what you have until you get it out there. So there was a lot of talk that, you know, this would be a learning experience for them. And it had better be a learning experience because they ought to start hitting the books, only completing one lap. But heading into 2015, like I said, you've got months before you head to Spain and Jerez. It's in between then. The simulations you can run, the stuff you can do with the rules where Honda's going to grow. And then in those sessions running whatever their model of car will be once that debuts at the end of January. That's when you're really going to start to get a better idea of what McLaren will have this year. Look, it's going to be a long fix. No one's saying it's going to be short. Honda knows this. The drivers who will be coming to McLaren, we still don't know who they both will be yet. Uh, they know that as well. So it's all about whatever you can do in the off season to at least springboard into 2015 with something and i'm fairly confident that they will do that disappointing not to run much but again you know they're not running the 2015 chassis it's it's much more of a young driver's test in abu dhabi at the end of the year than it is a test with meaningful implications heading forward all right now joel i've got a quick question for you let's shift some gears head over to the american side the indycar side of things we could possibly have 26 full-time drivers this year. Wouldn't that be exciting? It would be. The sad paradox in IndyCar is that there's so much talent, just not enough cars. And I'm happy to see my expectations for the entry list going up. Uh, and certainly I think the good news here is if we're going to have that many full-time cars, when you factor in the part-time guys, the guys who are only going to run Indy, we may actually have a bump day. We haven't Absolutely. had a really dramatic bump day in years. So how exciting would that be? Uh, you can put that up along with uh, a Bounce ride for time. Connor Daly on my Christmas wish list. Both of those will absolutely be on <laughs> there, there you for go. the holiday season. <laughs> the, the only two <laughs> things that really matter. Because uh, Connor Daly, I'd love to see him in a ride too. But whether it's overseas or domestic, just having so much trouble securing sponsorship, it's been the story for him. He's a guy with a lot mm -hmm. of talent. And 
you know, there's so many guys with talents, too. We talked about Jay Howard and how exciting it is for him to get that Green One sponsorship and go racing at Indy. And, you know, that's great, but what about young guys like Gabby Chavez coming off an Indy Lights title? Guys like Sage Karam who have proven in anything they've gotten behind the wheel with, whether it's a sports car with Ganassi or an Indy car, he's proven he can race. I mean, he is a sensational talent. You have to get him in a ride at some point. You know, I love the veterans, and I'm so thankful that the veterans are here as well. But, you know, one of the sad things about it is we've got these veterans who aren't going anywhere, and certainly they should not be going anywhere. I'm not at all saying we no. should force them out. But when you've got so many veterans, it you know, it's a great thing, but it's also a little bit of a curse for young guys because there's so many seats that are taken, and nothing is permanent. But you know what I mean when I say, you know, it, they're semi-permanent. You know, there are a lot of guys not in danger of losing their rides no matter what happens. So when you have so few rides available to begin with, it makes it a little bit more difficult for those guys. I would love to see more young talent getting those rides, but things really looking up for IndyCar. Some small ratings increases and with both channels in 2014. You'd expect those to go up in 2015. And happy that the car count, both on the Mazda Road to Indy ladder and on the Verizon IndyCar Series ladder, are both going up as well. Well, yeah, Joel, and I mean, I'll throw you a bone for a couple of seconds here. I mean, when when you hear speculation about Simona and even Jean-Eric Byrne coming back, or in Jean-Eric's case, coming to the IndyCar Series for 2015, it certainly makes you go and look at this and go, wait a minute, that that's happening? I certainly hope for his sake, that if he can't secure a good ride anywhere else to come to IndyCar, I think it would really set a very good precedent, too, because it's been a while since we've seen anybody do that. If you remember, Luis Razzi was supposed to get a ride with Marusha. Uh, sponsorship ended up falling through, goes to Indy Lights, and he hasn't really had the best opportunity there. And if you're going into anywhere on the Mazda road to Indy Ladder, truthfully, if you're not either, if you're not a young guy, a really young guy on the way up, it doesn't service you. So obviously he had no reason to go there and wouldn't be making a lot of money there either. But to come to IndyCar, this is no easy feat. Nigel Mansell went from F1 to kart, but he's a British racing legend when he went off an F1 championship and then ended up scoring a championship in kart. I mean, that, that was huge. He's a great talent. And it's going to take some learning because ovals are not easy. Ask Kimi Raikkonen. Now, granted, NASCAR and open wheel, two very separate things, but I'm sure Kimi will be the first to tell you. We step behind just about anything that has an engine and moves. You know, everything from rally to NASCAR to F1. He's been all over the place, and he really mightily struggled on oval so it's not an easy thing i think his expectations for competing for a title may be a little bit too high at this point but hey who who would want to hire a guy who said you know what you know i, I just want to finish about 13th i think that seems good no you want a guy who's got the dedication who wants to move forward and who knows if he races really well in indycar this could be a springboard for his career either here in the United States or overseas as well. It could certainly mean that he could pick up a sports car ride somewhere with people who are really impressed with what he's done or even work his way back into F1 if he really shines an IndyCar. I think it's a great career move, better than going to DTM or the WEC. For guys in Formula One whose career either fails in Formula One or stalls, especially if you want to stick with open wheel racing. I don't know why more guys don't consider IndyCar, but I hope they do because, I mean, certainly, uh, how great would it be for some of these teams if they could strike some sort of alliance and put some of their younger guys, some of their test drivers, and get them rides in open wheel too? Because a lot of these test drivers aren't racing regularly somewhere let him go to indycar and i know i think for indycar certainly i'm not saying that indycar is just a seat warmer to f1 i'm not suggesting that at all but <laughs> i would love to see more of the young talent especially you who want a shot at formula one to come to indycar see what you can do there because indycar has so much potential in so many ways but i feel like all across the board a lot of that potential is untapped Untapped it is, and and it, it's 
wow, I, that might be the most interesting spiel I've heard you say, Joel, next to maybe Snuggies for Dogs and Double File Restarts, because that was just bizarre in itself. Um, Which the irony, that- too, I, the irony, too, I do, I really did change my mind on that. I was a little disappointed to see Double File Restarts go. I, I started warming up to them. Uh, I think certainly in terms of Carnage, though, uh, I was right on point with that. It ended up uh-huh. costing teams a lot of money. So, you know, there's part of me that's sad to see that go. But uh, I think ultimately single file restarts just find still a fantastic racing product. And look at the talent we could be bringing in. How awesome would it be to see jean Eric Vernon in IndyCar? Oh, it would be fun. And Joel, Ryan, that about does it for this round of Open Wheel Central. But it's been fun with both of you. Uh, we still got two more shows before the holidays and uh, certainly more to talk about we'll get to more of that next monday and uh, it's been fun having both of you at the same round table it's not often we get to do that we need to do this more absolutely and it would be great to do it at a racetrack at some point in 2015 as always thanks a lot for having me on what am i supposed to do this weekend i always sign off and say you know whatever racing you may be watching wherever you may be be sure to enjoy it there's nothing am i gonna have to resort to youtube YouTube. am i gonna gonna have to go out and meet people (laughs) be social come on what? Uh, let, let's bring this back. I'm totally against ending the season before Labor Day now. I can't handle it. No racing. <laughs> well. <laughs> How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. In the Pits Media is proud to present its newest partner, WinYourNewCar.com. That's right. You now can enter the number one American dream car contest giveaway at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free, delivered to your door. Come on. Stop dreaming. Start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40-year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money-saving coupons. Cotman. Real service, real fast. You know that phone call is going to come at the worst possible time, right at the end of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth down, and one yard to go. They're piling up, but you can't watch that. you got to get that car off the road. This could have been prevented if you have taken advantage of Cotman's free TransCheck 21. Here's a chance to have us look at your car and head off any problems that could happen that could interrupt that game. Again, it's a free check. Come see us. See Leonard and fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703-365-7200. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip mall parts store and talk to the Do you want fries with that kid behind the counter? Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. Hi everybody, this is Getty Lee for RAD. To many of us, drunk driving is something that other people do. Certainly not one of our friends or relatives would do such a thing. When you see someone who's had too much to drink, about to get into a car, urge them to give up the keys and find alternate transportation. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives, you should too. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. We now return you to two and a half men on Speed 77 Radio's Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. Hey, do we get to make that three and a half now? James is here. I love it. Uh, and not only do I love that, but uh, the madness is about to get even more mad. Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, Kyle Magda, James Pike 
around this round table and let's go down under, shall we, uh, Mr. Resident Australian? And Mr. Resident Australian, you, sir, I imagine have shed some tears this week because gasp, say it isn't so. The worst kept secret in Australia is finally out. Ford's leaving V8 supercars. No. I don't necessarily know if it's something to cry over, but uh, to say that it's one of the biggest news pieces to come through the V8 supercars wire in uh, years, maybe decades even, would not be that much of a stretch. Ford's history in both the Australian Touring Car Championship and the V8 supercars era stretches all the way back to the 1960s when racing first became organized. It became a big thing down there. So uh, they have done it before in the past. It hasn't really worked out. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But, yes, the, the big news is that Ford will be pulling all factory support uh, come 2016. Uh, they will provide limited support to their one factory team, Ford Performance Racing, next season uh, before pulling out altogether uh, the following season. And uh, I think big is a little bit of an understatement for this one, Jacob. I, I think that might be the understatement of the week uh, <laughs> because I, you know, we all saw it coming, but we still, I, it, it's one of those that, uh, that it, it's taken it a minute to, to really sink in. And the, the real question is, where does this leave the Pepsi Max team now, James, uh, beyond 2015, because it, obviously that's the Ford factory team. That is Ford in Austria. Where does that operation go beyond next year? Well, in their press release, Pro Drive Racing Australia, which is the official name, uh, the registered name for Ford Performance Racing, uh, said that they have an interest in probably running the Falcon in 2016 without support ahead of the uh, what I believe is being referred to now as the Gen 2 regulation change that will come for the 2017 season. You also have to remember that Team Penske, uh, DJR, Dick Johnson Racing is also in this boat. And from what I've read, it sounds like they will probably go the same route as well and uh, save that big decision for... Uh, when you get that new era started in 2017, when you may have engines besides V8s, you may have cars that aren't sedans. There are a lot of changes coming that year. Uh, and to them, and I think rightly so, it seems like the smart thing to do is, even without the factory support, to just go forward with what you built up for one year. And then if you have to make a manufacturer change, do it in a year where everything else is going to change. And uh, to some degree, you might as well, because you'll have to change engines, body styles, if you like. So have you, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. And what's, you know, you talk about the ma whole manufacturer swap. It's the beginning of the true silly season, which has only begun itself in the last couple of years. We'll talk about driver swaps in a minute, but manufacturer swaps is, of course, the big news, James. And with one manufacturer's exit may come another manufacturer's entrance because Lexus is considering, uh, they, they've announced that they're considering entering the V8 supercar ranks uh, beyond 2015. It, it's going to be very interesting with the new regulations coming for 2016, 2017, and beyond. And uh, the, the marks, I just, I, I don't know that we're done seeing major manufacturer competition. And I mean, we, you talk about it, uh, Mercedes-Benz, they said they want to see some of the other German manufacturers get Audi and V8 supercars. I mean, let, let's have some fun with this. Well, in all fairness to Mercedes-Benz, and with all due respect to the leadership there, I'm not quite sure if they are qualified to speak on such matters until they begin to provide Airbus with factory support. Because Airbus has struggled ever since they made the switch to the E63 AMGs, only as a customer program. A Mercedes-Benz performance arm, not actually having any backing from the company. So uh, once they provide the support that will make Airbus properly competitive, then I will begin to listen to the likes of Mercedes-Benz say, oh, well, we want Audi, we want BMW, and so on and so forth. But yes, uh, Lexus did announce that they are heavily investigating an entry into the series. And uh, I think the most interesting thing is uh, if their entry comes in 2017, as would seem logical, uh, you get a few teams that you could go with here. Uh, you have some of the old Ford teams, 
uh, you know, you might have ProDrive, I guess, as they'll be known in 2016, uh, sitting out there looking for a new factory partner. You've got Team Penske, DJR. Uh, Penske's got connections all across the automobile world through his dealership, so he might look to try and find a factory backer uh, within one of the existing relationships he already has. Uh, and then you look down the list, you know, maybe the likes of Brad Jones Racing is a team that jumps out to me. They've run Holdens for forever. They're not the best Holden team. Would a jump to the likes of Lexus be something that gets them over the hump? They've been competitive at times throughout this year and in the past few years, and they just don't have that top-notch equipment. Uh, makes me wonder if they decided to jump, uh, if that might change things up in the grid just a bit. But I don't know. We, uh, I guess we'll see. We shall see. And, you know, we're talking about changing things up on the grid. Let's talk drivers for a minute, because obviously we know the Ambrose thing. We've, we've beat that dead horse a little bit at this round table. I mean, you've got Ash Walsh uh, taking over the Erebus seat. You've got Lee Holdsworth moving over to uh, one of the Ford seats. Uh, the, in the final season that it's going to be a Ford seat, uh, you've got uh, drivers swapping all over the place. And here we've got the rumor now that uh, Craig Lowndes could move over after 2015 when his contract's up at Red Bull to be a teammate to Marcus Ambrose at DJR Team Penske. Now, can, can we picture that lineup for a minute, please? Well, in fairness, you look at his performances over the past five, six, seven years, and he, by and large, has lived in the shadow of Jamie Wincup at Red uh -huh. Bull, which is crazy to think because it is Craig Lowndes, and he's one of the most successful drivers on the grid week in, week out. But uh, Jamie's numbers in this championship run that he's had have just been staggering to the point that even a great driver like Lowndes hasn't been able to keep up. So uh, it would be feasible if he wanted to make the move. Of course, I think that's also predicated on whether or not uh, Team Penske DJR actually comes to play, so to speak, in 2015 mm -hmm. and 2016. And uh, I guess we'll see how that goes. And uh, just thinking about it, you know, uh, Charlie Schwergolt Racing is another one of those teams you could throw into that bucket, uh, backtracking a little bit, as uh, one of the places where if you can find factory support, maybe they want to make the jump there. There are a lot of Ford cars on the grid that will need homes. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how those dominoes fall out and if there are any driver switches that come along with that. Oh, it's going to be very interesting. And what's also going to be very interesting? Sydney. We'll talk about that after this final caution flag of the night, James. So stand by. We go back down under and then wrap the madness right after this. You are listening to Speed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. How would you like to win a brand new Corvette? Larry O's got all the details. WinYourNewCar.com. Enter America's number one dream car giveaway contest at WinYourNewCar.com. Complete the puzzle the fastest and win a new Corvette tax-free. Come on. Stop dreaming. Start driving with WinYourNewCar.com. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40-year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money-saving coupons from Cotman. Real service, real fast. You know that phone call is going to come at the worst possible time, right at the end of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth down, and one yard to go. They're piling up, but you can't watch that. you got to get that car off the road. This could have been prevented if you have taken advantage of Cotman's free TransCheck 21. Here's a chance to have us look at your car and head off any problems that could happen that could interrupt that game. Again, it's a free check. Come see us. See Leonard and fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703-365-7200. Media sales professionals with agency experience. If you're frustrated with your current position, unrealistic quotas, and inept management, if you're a sales machine and you simply will not take no as an acceptable reply, if you're looking for a rapidly growing company with unlimited sales potential for commissions in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, if you're searching for a high-tech, forward-looking, laid-back, but extremely professional organization who appreciate your skills and dedication. We have your next opportunity. Scorpion Radio Group is building a sales team of self-starters who are motivated. Your imagination is the only limit here. 
Call 717-749-0444 or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. That's 717-749-0444 and ask for Sue. Hi, this is Yen Scott from Summit Point Cart in Summit Point, West Virginia. If you're looking for a real racing experience on a real racetrack, come out to Summit Point Cart this weekend. For as little as $25, you can get your racing career started. New this year, Summit Point Cart offers the RX250 capable of over 75 miles an hour. We're open every Friday from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m., Saturday from noon till 10 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 9 p.m. For more information, go to our website, Summit Point cart with a k.com or you can call us at 304-725-5270 summit point cart your east coast karting center for 17 years stock car steel has been a leading material supplier to the racing industry now they're also an official motorsports content partner of race chaser online the biggest names in nascar trust stock car steel for all their raw materials such as carbon steel chrome molly dom aluminum plastics and much much more you can't build a race car without the basic materials and stock car steel is the the place to get them. Don't forget to also visit Stock Car Steel sister company SRI Supplies for racing and industry. SRI is your number one source for all your shop supply needs. Nuts, bolts, rivets, tapes, adhesives, cutting tools, chemicals, body shop supplies, paint shop supplies, lubricants, and more. A well-stocked race shop is a winning race shop and the road to winning begins with three letters SRI. For more information, visit StockCarSteel.com and sri Supplies. You can also find them on Facebook at Stock Car Steel and Aluminum or call either company toll-free at 1-888-752-7272. You're listening to Speed 77 Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to Jacob, Tom, and Kyle on Motorsports Madness. We're back. We are very much back and uh, getting ready to wrap the madness here on Speed 77 Radio. Jacob Seelman, Tom Baker, Kyle Magda, James Pike at this roundtable. And James, 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 guess what? What? Okay, so besides the fact that it's Sydney week, it's now December. And you know what that means? No, what does that mean, Jacob? It's the most wonderful time of the year, dang it. Your name is Jacob Seelman, not Andy Williams, last time I checked. Although I give you credit for the song reference. It's a great holiday song. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that reference was, actually. The most wonderful time of the year. I I'm a little suspicious, Spikester, actually. Anytime Jacob starts talking about it being the most wonderful time of the year, all I, knowing him as well as I do, all I can think about is lots and lots of eggnog. Well, I suppose that's all true, but I, I just went with the obvious one because the Andy Williams song is far and away the most famous when you bring up that line. So, uh, But I believe there's a small piece of business that needs to be discussed, and before we get off into eggnog and whatnot and uh, even the race of champions, we need to discuss Sydney now, don't we, Tom? I think we do. What, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? What, can we, what should we be looking for out of Sydney? Well, Sydney is one of the three Super Street weekends on the calendar, along with the season opener in Adelaide and the mid-season jaunt up to Queensland and Townsville. Uh, And it is relatively similar to those two, obviously, because it's a street course. So, And uh, I almost forgot about the Gold Coast, and we can throw that in there, too. But uh, I I think Adelaide's probably your best comparison if, if you're looking for a track Uh, to really try and nail this down. However, um, this course being so new, uh, it is rather simplistic. And by and large, it is a series of long straightaways, long straightaways, long straightaways, and chicanes. And the track can get very tricky in places, especially coming down the front straightaway, very quick, very fast, very wide too. And then you come down to a 90-degree left-hander in turn one where everybody has to woe things down and usually things will happen and people will get into one another there and it gets tricky and from there on uh, you're running at a track that's about as narrow as the rest of Adelaide uh, especially in the chicanes all over the course where the track just seems to funnel down to about a half lane worth of racing room Uh, you're going to see people make contact in them you will see cars turn around in those spots Uh, but you're going to see a fun weekend this is a track where 
the excitement usually is way, way up there if for nothing else because it's the final weekend of the season. And sometimes, not this year, but especially last year, you had the championship battle going all the way down to the wire between Jamie Winkup and Craig Lowndes. So uh, it'll be a fun one to watch. And it's a great way to close out uh, the V8 Supercars calendar and really the racing calendar in general, save for uh, the race of champions, which I believe comes the week after. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. I think you're right. I think it's the week after. And, and you know what? Uh, I think it's been a phenomenal season overall for V8s. And, you know, it's it's been fun to watch. And I, I especially uh, have enjoyed watching some of the races that have been put on down the stretch. I mean, you know, it's it's going to be a, a really interesting year, uh, Kyle Magda, coming into 2016 with Penske returning. This is really going to be uh, an awful lot of fun to, to watch, to see uh, with Penske coming in and Marcus Ambrose coming back. Um, I mean, I can't wait. Yeah, and like you guys have been saying about that Sydney race, to see Marcus Ambrose come back in that Xbox car, uh, I'm I actually my I'm probably gonna try and pay attention. I'm not sure what time the race is, but I'm gonna try if I can to to watch the race and see how he does in his return. Because like you guys said, that I think this is you know this is a good move for for Marcus Ambrose coming back to V8. You know, not ha- having some success in NASCAR and now coming back to his homeland of Australia. Yeah, no, I I almost forgot about that and and all of the storylines that we've had come across. But yes, that that might be one of the biggest stories as far as top contenders go is that Marcus Ambrose will be running a wild card entry for Team Penske DJR in that 66 Xbox Ford Falcon uh, and might be up towards the front. Although there are a few guys that you have to look at when you go to Sydney. Obviously, Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes are there, but uh, Shane Van Gisbergen is the one that really jumps out at me. Shane has always been at his very best when you come to the street courses. He finished third in the race on Saturday last year and won the Sunday race. He'll be a threat no matter what happens because he's just quick and he's really, really gifted. Uh, I think you could also take a look at the likes of Jason Bright to step it up for Brad Jones Racing. They've had a little bit of a down year compared to 2013, but... Jason managed to get fourth on Saturday, second on Sunday last year. They've got a really, really good program. And I'd like to think that they'll be able to rebound and end on a high note in 2014. Uh, This is a team that's had their struggles. I think uh, you think back to the beginning at Adelaide where uh, Jason Bright ended his day on his roof and probably the craziest crash of the season that has become immortalized in the many, many opening montages that – it's in cars media uses. So I, I think they need something to erase that memory from their minds because I don't really feel like they've done all that uh, up to this point in the season. And uh, Tom, I'd, I'd like to think that a podium uh, might not necessarily cure everything, but it, it'll certainly go a long way towards something. Well, it, it surely will. And, and, and you know what? I, I, I think when you look at the amount of competition that uh, the V8 Supercar Series has, and you got guys like Jamie Wincup, who's basically said, look, I'm not going anywhere fast. And, you know, I, I'm staying right here and I'm going to continue to fight for more championships. And then you got, you know, you got Marcus coming back. You got some of these other guys that are, you got manufacturers leaving. You got new cars coming in in 2017. I mean, it, you know, this is a series. I, I don't think nearly enough people in the U.S. probably pay much attention to, but they should because it's some of the best racing you will find anywhere in any series. And it is so much fun to watch, James. It is interesting that you bring that up because while I think the popularity of the series has grown overseas, there are many, many fans back home in Australia and New Zealand that are livid to say the least at CEO, James Warburton. Uh, He signed a new TV deal that will start next year with Fox and the 10 network and we'll move the V8 supercars to pay TV for the first time. So instead of seeing all the races live and free, uh, you're only going to get six, and you've got the three races in the Enduro Cup, Adelaide, and two that, more, I think. Uh, I had not seen that. That That's not good. Well, it's interesting. You've got that, and then you couple it with Ford's decision, uh, I guess today in Australia and uh, early this morning here, to lead the V8 supercars. Uh, and it's got a lot of fans back home wondering what the future of this sport and this category down there will be, especially 
uh, when you take 2017 into account. So uh, we'll see what happens. Sirius is expanding worldwide, but back home uh, there might be trouble brewing. But regardless, the racing will still be good, Tom. I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Oh, not at all. It's just a shame. I, 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 you know, when somebody says racing and says pay-per-view, I mean, I understand like the short track series, uh, that would be plural, uh, going to the internet and doing, you know, the pay-per-view on, on the broadcast like that. I mean, that's, th that's been an acceptable formula, but, uh, not at all excited about seeing, uh, pay-per-view in a major series like this. But we'll talk more about this on next week's show. We will be back next Monday with another couple of hours of Motorsports Madness here on Performance Motorsports Network. So for Jacob Seelman, for Kyle Magda, for James Pike, for Ryan Cannon, Joel Sebastianelli, along with our guests Dalton Kellett and Zach Veach, we want to say thank you for tuning in. We hope you've had a good time listening to us, and we look forward to coming back next Monday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time with another episode of Motorsports Madness here on the Performance Motorsports Network. And we're going to keep up with Bill Shea's progress at Utica, Rome as well. So have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Monday right back here and continue to hang out here on PMN for more great motorsports programming. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Motorsports Madness with the Speed 77 Radio Race Chaser Online crew. Stay tuned to Performance Motorsports Network for more race talk. For the latest motorsports news, visit racechaseronline.com. Motorsports Madness is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network. www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com. A member of the Scorpion Radio Group, Inc. and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-host, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week when the madness returns on Monday night at 7 Eastern. Until then, keep it off the wall and keep the shiny side up. <laughs>